Today, we are going to pay tribute to one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Pete Maravich. I'm going to share with you some stories about his unbelievable work ethic, his legendary scoring ability, his prediction of his own death, and we're going to talk about the lasting impact he's had on the game. So how are you guys doing? My name is Mike, and before we take a journey into Pete Maravich's childhood, a time period that saw him work harder at the game of basketball than anyone I've ever heard of, before we remember Pete's record-breaking years at LSU, before we remember his brief stardom in the NBA, before we remember the floppy socks. We first need to look at the greatest tragedy of the basketball career of Pistol Pete, and that was the man was just born into the wrong era. Number seven, a man before his time. From his early childhood up until his last seasons as a pro, Pete Maravich played the game of basketball without a three-point line and without a hand check rule. Now, I'm going to go more into depth as to what that meant for his stats as we get later into this video, but let's just talk about what this meant for his career in general. When you watch highlights of Pistol Pete, when you hear stories of his play, you quickly realize that the man was before his time. He would consistently pull up from as deep as 30 feet out, even though his bombs would only count for two points, because that's how incredible his range and shooting ability were. And so, if his opponents were forced to guard him from 30 feet and in, if they were not allowed to control him with a hand check, well, he would have been virtually unstoppable. Drop Pete in the modern NBA and you suddenly have a man who has the potential to be a cross between Steph Curry and Steve Nash. That's how good both his jump shot and court vision were. That's how deadly of a scorer and playmaker he was. And on top of all of this, the man had perhaps more imagination and creativity than any player who has ever stepped foot on a basketball Court. So, as we continue to talk about the legend that was Pistol Pete Maravich, just remember, for as good as he was, he could have been even better. Number 6. A Basketball Android Yes, looking back at his childhood, Pete Maravich described his kid self as a basketball android. This was a very accurate self-assessment, as his earliest memories are of his dad, Press, basically forcing a love of the game into his soul. Now, Press was a former professional basketball player who was never a star. This haunted him and he vowed that his son would become a greater player than he himself had ever been. And so, when Pete was a kid, Press would often send him inside and shoot around on a basketball hoop outside of their house. Pete would watch from the window as his dad shot baskets for hours and made it seem like the most fun thing anyone has ever done. Press would pump his fist after long jump shots, yell in celebration after performing tricky dribble moves, and most importantly, he didn't let Pete join in. And so Pete grew jealous, and when he thought his dad wasn't looking, he would run outside and steal some alone time dribbling and trying to shoot baskets himself. That's when Press knew he had Pete hooked, but he wasn't done yet. Because as Pete began to get older, he also began to excel at baseball and football. So within a span of a few months, Press brought Pete out to catch fly balls on a particularly sunny day and didn't stop until Pete missed a ball and it hit him in the face. At that moment, Press convinced a crying Pete that baseball wasn't for him. And as for the football problem, well, Press went even further. He actually told Pete's 8th grade coach to put then quarterback Pete into danger as much as possible. And after Pete got wrecked time and time again on the field, he decided to stick with basketball. So yeah, Press Maravich was basically a psychopath. Sure, he was a loving father who wanted the best for his son, but the way he forced Pete to play basketball was kind of questionable. But personally, I don't hold anything against Press because Pete doesn't hold anything against Press. That's because Pete knew his dad was right. He should stick to basketball. Number five, the greatest work ethic of all time. The way people talk about him now, it seems like Pete Maravich began to dribble a basketball the second he came out the womb. He dribbled as he walked to school. He would dribble in movie theaters. He would lie across the back seat and dribble the ball out side of a car door while his dad drove him around town. And while his dribbling practice methods were already the stories of legends, that's not all Pete was practicing. His work ethic could only be described as relentless, as on school days he would often practice as many as 8 hours a day, getting in shots before school, then working on
on dribbling drills and one-on-one -on -one moves after it. And yeah, he all but ignored his homework and when teachers called home, Press told them to mind their own business because to him, basketball was way more important. And since school days were filled with basketball, it should come as no surprise that summer days were even more intense. Every day of the summer, Pete would wake up at 6 a.m., practice by himself at the local basketball court until other people showed up, play pickup games all day, then shoot free throws by himself when everyone else had left. This incredible work ethic produced unreal results, and by the time he was in 8th grade, he was already playing on his town's varsity team. It was then that he was given the nickname Pistol after dropping 33 points on a division rival despite the fact that at the time he stood at just 5 foot 6 and weighed around 85 pounds. But of course, eventually Pete would begin to grow. And as he grew in height, his legend grew right along with him. His high school career saw him dazzle fans with his incredible no-look passes, his unbelievable court vision, and his unlimited shooting range. No one had ever seen a basketball player like Pistol Pete. And by the time he was a senior, he had grown to stand at 6 foot 5 and was now almost unguardable. High school competition became too easy, and soon Pete found himself scrimmaging against and dominating his father's teams at NC State, routinely lighting up starters on a team that would finish 20 and 4 in the ACC. From there, Pete played one season at prep school, then committed to play for his dad at LSU, where he became number four, the greatest college scorer we've ever seen. Let it be known that Pete Maravich is the greatest scorer in college basketball history, and no one else is even close. While at LSU, Pete set and still holds the record for points in an NCAA career with 3,667. Now, this number is already absurd, but it's even more impressive when you consider these three things. Number one, again, Pete was playing without a three-point line. For his career, he averaged about 17 made field goals a game. When comparing him to Steph Curry, again, a player who played just like Pete, Steph averaged 8.4 made field goals a game in his college career, and of those 8.4 shots made, four were three-pointers. So if we're being cautious and say that Pete would have averaged five made threes a game for his LSU career, then that means he would have added an extra 415 points to his career point total. Number two, when Pete played college basketball, there was no shot clock. Obviously, the addition of a shot clock would have meant more possessions and thus more shots for Pete. Number three, Pete Maravich only played college basketball for three seasons. Yup, Pistol Pete holds the record for points in a college basketball career, and he was only allowed to play in three seasons because at the time, freshmen were not allowed to play college basketball. Yeah, this rule was ridiculous, and yeah, the fact that he only played in three seasons makes Pete's record even more ridiculous. In three seasons, Maravich averaged a seemingly unrealistic 44.2 points per game. He was a three-time first-team All-American, two-time National Player of the Year, and the most famous college basketball player the world has ever seen. As in his time at LSU, Pete became a national sensation. His signature haircut and floppy sock combo was now recreated by kids and high school players across the country. The LSU Tigers began to draw record-setting crowds, a fact that was remarkable in SEC football territory. Local reporters who had never been to a basketball game before were now following LSU across the country. Opposing fans would carry Pete on their shoulders after games, Pete's socks even began to be routinely stolen from the LSU locker room. The only knock on Pete during this time was that his team never reached the NCAA tournament, but that was hardly his fault. The year before Pete joined the LSU varsity team, the Tigers went an awe-inspiring 3-20, and and by the time he left, the program was in a way different place. Now they were a national name, they reached the final four of the NIT, and as for Pete, well, now it was finally time for the pistol to bring his talents to the bright lights of the NBA. Number 3. 68 points. Throughout his NBA career, Pete averaged 24.2 points, 5.4 assists, and 4.2 rebounds a game. He is one of only 6 players in NBA history to ever average 24 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds for his career. He is also the only player on that list to never win an NBA championship, which was disappointing. And as a whole, Pete's career 
can't exactly be called disappointing, but just like in high school and college, the individual stats and awards were always there. Pete played in the NBA for nine seasons without any major injury concerns. Then two seasons after injury concerns took place. In those nine injury free seasons, Maravich was a five-time All-Star, was twice a member of the second team All-NBA, and twice a member of the first team All-NBA. His most dominant year was in 1977, where he put up a league high 31.1 points to go along with 5.4 assists and 5.1 rebounds a night. He scored 50 points or more four times in 77, and against the Knicks, Pete went off for 68 points before fouling out after two questionable offensive fouls in the closing minutes of the game. But with all of this said, the 1977 Jazz did not even make the playoffs. And an even bigger problem was this wasn't a surprise, as in his nine healthy years, Pete never played on a team that reached even the conference finals, and after three straight playoff years to begin his career, his final six healthy years saw him play on losing teams. And of course, while some are going to say that this was because he was a ball hog, because he was a showman, because he was whatever. Think about this. For much of Pete's career, the NBA only had 17 or 18 teams. In that time, for whatever reason, the league would routinely have as many as 28 or 30 All-Stars in a single year. Now, in Pete Maravich's nine healthy seasons, 231 total All-Stars were chosen, which was almost 26 a season. Of those 231 players, a grand total of 10 played on teams that Pete played on, which meant about one All-Star out of 26 each year was either Pete himself or his teammate. Going even further, Pete only played with two other All-Stars in those entire nine seasons. So yeah, while the media may have gotten on his back at this time, I don't really know what they wanted Pete to do. The man just never played with any real talent. Give him an All-Star level big man and everything changes. But if you're still not convinced that Pete was one of the all-time greats, then just listen to what his peers had to say about him. Number two, the ultimate respect of his peers. To really understand just how good Pete Maravich was, I'm going to present you with some quotes from six players who are in the Hall of Fame and one player who soon will be. He was way before his time. I don't know if you'll ever see a ball handler like him ever. Dominique Wilkins. Anytime they talk about today's players and how good they are, I say you haven't seen Pete Maravich. Calvin Murphy. I learned a long time ago that you take something from greatness and add it to your game. Pete showed me how to score, how to put the ball in the hole. George Gervin. He was the greatest ball handler I've ever seen in my life. He could do things with the ball that were unbelievable. Rick Barry. Oscar was the best guard I've ever played against. Jerry West was the best I've ever played with. And Pete is the best I've ever seen. Elgin Baylor. Like a master chess player, he saw things that nobody else did. Bill Walton. We're all doing things he did first. Steve Nash. And while I hope these quotes have helped to give you an idea of what Pete Maravich meant to the game of basketball, let's end on this one quote. I don't want to play 10 years in the NBA and then die of a heart attack at the age of 40. That quote what was from a 26 year old Pete Maravich and and number one predicted his own death in his last season as a professional basketball player Pete rode the bench for a Boston Celtics team that would lose in the Eastern Conference Finals at this point his body had betrayed him and the fire for basketball that had once consumed his soul had been extinguished and so at the young age of 32 Pete Maravich retired and asked himself what's next basketball had been his entire life and now there was an emptiness in his heart that he found almost impossible to fill. The years following his retirement were filled with dark moments. He began to drink, he prepared for the apocalypse, his family and friends became more and more worried. And I could go into more detail about those times, but I'd just rather not. Instead, let's talk about the years leading up to his death. The years that saw things turn around for Pete. In these years, he found true meaning in life away from basketball. He became a a better family man, a reformed alcoholic, and a born-again Christian. It was this Pete, a happy Pete, that took the court to film a quick segment of pickup basketball for a Christian radio show. In this pickup game, Pete felt real joy on the court for the first time in a long time, telling those around him, I feel great. It was then that he collapsed, moments later dead at the age of 40. In a bizarre twist, he had predicted his own death, as he indeed had died of heart failure due to an undiagnosed
diagnosed heart condition. And with the passing of Pete Maravich, the country saw itself lose one of its biggest basketball icons. Across the United States, newspapers such as the New York Post would go on to devote their entire back pages to Pete. And Post writer Peter Vesey put it best, writing, the pistol dies playing the game he loved. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking at the life of Pistol Pete Maravich. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for basketball videos like this. I do NBA what ifs. I look at NBA conspiracies. I do a whole lot of basketball stuff here. So basically, if you love basketball, I think you'll love this channel. To everyone who's already subscribed, thank you guys so much for supporting. You're awesome. We know this.